Welcome to the Journal of Biophilic Design podcast. Many thanks for joining us on the Journal of Biophilic Design today. First of all, some news. We are going to be exhibiting at Planted Country on the 9th uh, to the 11th of June at the most beautiful National Trust venue in Stourhead in Wiltshire. Planted Country this year will revolve around the critically acclaimed Planted Unearthed Talks programme. And I'm excited to be talking, um, speaking on a panel with Oliver Heath, um, Hugo Bug, and also James Scully of Recork about how biophilic design can reduce the impact of climate change. We'll also be drilling down on what's biophilia and also how it can be applied to design to improve our environment. This is going to be 11 o'clock on the 9th of June, actually at Stourhead. Um, so please make sure you get your tickets. The link will be on the spiel that goes with the uh, podcast. Um, if for some reason you're listening after the event, do go to their website and register for their newsletter because they run some uh, terrific talks programs throughout the year too. So there's going to be also a botanical market showcasing brands and businesses who place nature and environment at their core, and plus a series of wellness and practical nature-based workshops and woodland walks. There's food, there's all sorts of stuff. Plus there's an amazing exhibitor who's going to be there, um, who's with us today. I'm just going to tease into the conversation here. Um, the city's issue of the journal um, has come out and we obviously we encourage the inclusion of green wherever we can and simple ways to green your um, your place and space and home and office is actually to green your roof. Um, it's got so many benefits, which we're going to hear about all today. So also exhibiting there will be Sedum Green Roof. And I'm excited to be joined by Liv Ayres. So uh, Liv, many thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Hi, Ness. Thank you very much for having me. Brilliant. Um, what can you um, sort of tell us about yourself? What got you into sedum and green roofs? I'm sure it wasn't a straightforward journey, but um, yeah. No. Yeah. So basically, um, I've had a career in uh, project management um, and the NHS. Um, I was a program director for innovation um, NHS England um, uh, quite a while ago now, before COVID. And I basically started a family and realised that I could... I just I just couldn't live anymore um, in the cities and I grew up in rural Wiltshire so I moved back with my son to rural Wiltshire and I did a major life change basically um, and with a young son I needed to work around it and I found this job <laughs> which wasn't really advertised as anything um, of this lovely gentleman who had a green roof company and I thought oh, that sounds interesting um, you know I love horticulture I grew up gardening with a grandmother yeah. um this will be great I love you know quite good at admin um and took the job on that was six years ago now and now I run the entire company it has since been sold so I've got a new lovely owner um but I run it I run basically everything I run um, all the day-to-day -day goings on and I I'm just so pleased I did it because um, my life is now sitting in rural Wiltshire in the Chalk Valley, um, explaining to everybody why green roofs are so great. And I'm now completely invested. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds really lovely. Um, nature yeah. is a healer anyway, isn't it? And I think yeah. it's a bold move, um, you know, to go from one thing to another. It's literally yeah. extreme, isn't it, to another? So. Yeah. Um, can you explain a little bit about how um, a seed and green roof works? We're going to be sharing a video a bit later on, but, um, you know, where and, and how would you install it? It can be installed um, in all sorts of projects, large, small. We have done all sorts. Majority of people have seen them in roofs in London. Um, lots of people do small projects like bike stores or bin stores. OK, I never thought That's about really that. Yeah, I never yeah, thought about doing small ones. Yeah, yeah, really small. I mean, literally one meter by half a meter, um, and we sell small amounts, so that's absolutely fine. Um, delivery can be an issue, but um, you're welcome to collect it from our farm. Um, so we do literally small through to large. Um, we do large commercial. We do all sorts. I mean, we have done some weird and wonderful projects. Mm -hmm. um, and coastal, inland cities, we do um, a lot of London, Bath, Bristol at the moment. Yeah. Um, lots of other cities are now clicking on. I think Cambridge 
um, are also realising now that they need to green um, their lovely city. So we do lots, urban, um, coastal, all sorts. So yeah, it can it can go anywhere. And it's essentially, um, our product is, is um, one specific product. There are lots of different products on the market and there are lots of different projects um, will require different products. So ours is not always the best product for it. Um, but we sell the trays of sedum, which are really, really simple and easy to install. Um, and we um, keep it nice and lightweight and we're sustainable and recycled as well. So obviously you said coastal. I always think because we've just been down by the coast and we you know, love it down, love it by the sea. Do you need different plants there or the sedum? Are they no. resilient? They're really, really hardy plant sedum. It's a little mini succulent. And the sedums we use are low growing. So it doesn't go over. Well, the flowers reach to up to um, 15 centimetres um, in the summer. Um, but it doesn't go any higher than that. Um, and it's very low maintenance because it's a succulent. Yeah. Um, so, and it's really hardy to coastal. One of the sedums is actually native to Scotland okay. uh, and that's coastal. So it thrives there. Oh. So it's fine, yeah. Oh, it's to show my ignorance because you think sedum and they do look like little cactuses and stuff, you yeah. know, so kind of think, but you don't, I don't think, obviously they're native. I don't even yeah. know that. So, yeah, <laughs> a lot of, there are, you know, all over the world uh sedum is um you know lots of you know, israel middle east all sorts so yeah so can you sort of explain what it is <laughs> sort of what 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 is it what are we, what are we talking about here <laughs> so um a sedum roof essentially usually is uh, an additional layer on top of a finished waterproof roof uh, so let's say you have an extension to your house and you've got this gray extension and you look down on out of your bedroom window and we would come along and we would supply the trays which are a drainage layer a filter fleece which stops the soil which is on top of that leaching through and then the vegetation on top of that so there's three layers um and they're all in one tray with our product so there's no messy lots of different layers to be put down it's just one tray that you pick up put down on your roof and then look at the results. I mean, it is really that simple. Uh, wow. Lots of people overthink it and it's really simple. <laughs> well, the, the video, which is going to be, uh, which I'm going to show a bit later on um, in this um in this podcast it's a video cast so listeners who are listening to this on audible or spotify um you can go to youtube and you can uh, search for the journal of bifolic design and it will be on there it's also on our website journal of design.com under podcasts um uh, yeah i just i think it's i think i think they're fantastic and um the video that you've got and obviously you, yourself you speak about all the different benefits of yeah. a sedum roof can you explain you know what what they might be um i mean the list goes on but the main ones air purifying okay. huge um huge air purifying benefits because of the nature of sedum reduces rainwater runoff which is huge especially in cities you mm. know our drainage system just cannot cope yeah. with the huge amount of rainfall we've been having especially the storms recently um i'm sure we've all been in the city when the heavens have opened and you think oh my God, where has this water come from? Yeah. Well, it's yeah. come from the roof. Uh, it just, they just can't cope with it. Um, the sedum and the trays are designed, they hold a certain amount of water um, and the sedum just sucks it up, basically. Um, so we have um, a product within our trays called Lika, which is expanded clay. Um, and that actually does two jobs. It expels excess water and retains water. So it does it's very clever it does two things basically um so it also reduces uh temperature of the roof okay so it helps combat the urban heat effect which is well i think actually probably the most important <laughs> yeah. uh, you go to london and I, I only recently found this out and i can't believe more people don't know this and i'm sure some of your listeners may not know this london is an average of 10 degrees warmer than mm. other cities in London, in the UK. I mean, 10 degrees, yeah. that's, that's huge. It is. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, so um, if if you go to a city or, or anywhere, really, you know, if you 
got some concrete in your garden or whatever. If you're on a hot sunny day like today, touch that concrete, you think, oh my God, that's really hot. Well, what the sedum does is you put the sedum on the roof, it absorbs the heat, it doesn't bounce it back off. So it's an insulating property as well. Um, so it could reduce London temperatures by yeah. two degrees. Yeah. Um, which is an amazing thing, which is, yeah, I think uh, great. Um, it, it increases uh, efficiency of solar panels, which is a 5% gain, which okay. that's a recent figure that's come out, basically based on the fact that um, the guys that produce solar panels know that um, the heat from where it's sitting damages the efficiency. Oh, of course. Yeah, so, so you if put, you can so you put the solar panels on the top and then the sedum underneath, sort of thing. Yeah, no. So the down. sedum will sit around the panels. Oh, okay. It, the sedum will overall reduce the heat of the building and of the roof mm -hmm. on it. So, yeah. So that's a great, great reason. Um, yeah. So mm -hmm. um, another one is it reduces noise. Okay. I mean, biophilia is all about including noise reduction. Um, which is great. Um, it, it reduces energy consumption. So both of these things are factored into um, in the fact that it's a, it's actually an insulation layer. Yeah. Um, so it reduces the energy consumption by ten to thirty percent, depending on the size of the roof, depending on where it is. So mm. there's lots of factors on that. Um, mm. And with energy bills at the moment, that's yeah bonus. <laughs> okay. um, it extends the lifespan of the roof stops the uv rays hitting the roof surface uh, okay. which is huge mm. yeah so that's really good um our trays are actually uv have a uv filter built into them um so um the trays won't be damaged by U uv anyway but the vegetation completely knits together so you don't see the trays so yeah, yeah. and then the another main one is it increased biodiversity um so you know it replaces um habitat you know mm -hmm. if you have an extension you, you've lost that space on the ground mm -hmm. you're not going to get it back um if you put a green roof on top you you're not replacing the ground surface um by diversity because it is different on a roof but you're in some way mitigating that mm -hmm. um which is a great start it's better than nothing <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah i mean yeah. If you think, yeah think about it as well not only does it is it beautiful because it looks attractive i mean yeah. you imagine sort of you know if you've got i mean i'm just now thinking of the shed that's outside that's driving me nuts and i've got these two well three flower pots that are on there at various stages of, of death yeah. <laughs> which yeah needs to do something with and i'm thinking you're just you're talking and you're going well it's low maintenance yeah. i don't have to do much yeah. about it it's sustainable it's going to reduce the yeah. heat it's going to look pretty out of my window um and it's going to stop the rain because there's a, it's obviously on the shed it just keeps and it just mops so if, if there's like yeah. you have to tell me about how this in a minute i think it's i think it's brilliant i think it's um I sold it. <laughs> yeah, you did you did and and yeah. you're a really ethical company as well which is the reason yeah. we're here as well so it's yeah. um it's really really cool um yeah so um obviously they're easy to maintain i mean this is my next question obviously yeah. i've just expressed that i've got three dead pots outside on my window so i've got loads outside yeah. which are various sort of various stages of well actually no, they're fine but the ones on there which i can't access you see i can't yeah. that's the problem yeah. it's hard to water yeah. um it does depend on the size of your roof yep. sedum is a succulent i've said that yeah phrase and the product we use within it it's very high quality it's all uk british made recycled but it all designed to retain as much water as possible um and expel it when needed um but um because of that um the trays are the best way um to keep the maintenance low you can get a mat system mm -hmm. we don't sell that anymore because we have had customers come back to us with problems mm -hmm. um it is higher maintenance um you get the leaching of the soil out into the gutters. Um, so you you have to replace the soil. The, the, there are more maintenance issues with the matting system. But the trays retain the soil. We have a special filter fleece, uh, which makes our product longer lasting and sustainable because none of the soil goes away. Um, so the s maintenance is really easy. We say twice a year for an average size roof. So the average roof we do is 30 to 40 square meters. And twice a year in the spring, you've got to go up if you can, uh, weed, weed it if you can, 
So anything obvious that's not sedum, grass, um, anything like that, moss. Um, and then you'll sprinkle on a really simple granulated, long lasting uh, fertilizer. And that's it. Step back until the summer, when the summer potentially there's a lot of drought. If you can water it, once a week light watering is all it requires. Um, lots of people just stand on the ground and sprinkle a hose up. Yeah. Um, essentially, if you can get water up there, it's better. If you're building it on an inaccessible roof, um, we do recommend you put an in irrigation system up there. Yeah. Uh, lots of people and architects come to us actually, um, which is great because you're starting at specification yeah. level. Mm. Um, and they say, oh, you know, what should we do? And we'll say, well, look, it depends on the client. Um, some people are really keen and, and say, no, I'll climb out the bedroom window. I want to do this. It's fine. Uh, um, but lots of people, could, you know, they don't do that. Um, <laughs> and, understandably. Um, and if it's inaccessible, they build in an irrigation system. Um, so in very long periods of drought, you're going to turn it on. You're going to water it. Mm. Um, see, it, it will survive to an extent. Um, it will just be very poor the, the year later. And mm -hmm. uh, that's what, all we say, really. Mm -hmm. um, and who knows with climate change what our summers are going to be like. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we, I, you know, it's so uncertain the weather at the moment, so we don't know. Um, and then in the autumn, you're just going to quickly weed again and check it's all all right, and that's it, really. So it really is very, very simple. Okay. Uh, so it does sound really simple, actually. It's yeah. sort of like a no-brainer if you've got a space I mean especially on a shed like that to get you going yeah. on it do you know what I mean sort of yeah that's such a good idea and just you saying about you know roofs and things you think about office blocks in London or in a city yeah. or a town or whatever and and or even just you know you dig up people dig up and put asphalt down or they put their concrete down for their driveways or for whatever else they're going to do for the roads but imagine you know you're creating wildlife corridors as well for like butterflies yeah. and, and bees and things to sort of to stop on and kind of like have a it's like a little give them a little cafe on the way on the way through yeah. uh, the next place sort of thing isn't it it's yeah, like absolutely. a halfway house <laughs> yeah in terms of biodiversity um what kind of like sort of positives have you had out of this I mean what what kind of what's the sort of uptake of the uh, nature um, world? <laughs> huge I mean absolutely huge so really? yeah so we um so there are some journals and some um papers that say um a sedum roof is bad i think any green roof is good yeah. it's better than a plastic roof yeah um we do encourage people to do a little section of their roof with different levels of substrate which is the substrate is the growing medium which is 20 percent organic material um which is peat free um and then the rest is made up of uh, crushed brick and clay and building waste from the UK building industry, which is sounds crazy, but it's yeah. really effective. Yeah. Um, and invertebrates love it. So, but they do know, research has shown that the different heights and the different layers um, create more habitat for um, different um, invertebrates. Um, so we do encourage people to do that. Um, but bees and butterflies from when it flowers from may if it's depends on spring um through literally to september october it can flower okay um so a great nectar source um and it's really beautiful to see um it's just constant activity hive of activity if you sit at our farm and watch um it's lovely lovely diverse range of all sorts um aphids worms anything that the birds bring up um and birds do love it as well sometimes we get customers saying help i've got a pigeon taking a liking to a patch of my sedum <laughs> um and it's fine you know if the bird likes it it's fine that's what nature is um yeah. and sedum is does grow like a weed it will regrow really easily Okay. so if a blackbird takes fancy to it fine <laughs> <laughs> oh it's really nice well um obviously we've we spoke about maintenance and stuff and and things so i might um just put the video in now so if yeah. people are what if people are listening uh please make sure you come back and and watch it on youtube or or on um on our website journal of under uh, podcast so 
Um, so let's let's watch that now. We are Seedham Green Roof. We are a small family run business nestled in the rolling countryside of Wiltshire in rural Cranbourne Chase, the heir of outstanding natural beauty. Being surrounded by nature and rolling pastures, we can see firsthand the risk posed by climate change. So we put this at the heart of our business. We ensure all our products are sustainable, recycled and minimise waste in our product. We are proud to source all our products from Britain, with exception for our recycled trays, which are made in Europe. So the benefit of our premium S-Pod include uh, saving your energy costs, it's an insulating product, mitigating flood risk in towns and cities, uh, enabling biodiversity, providing lovely habitat for the important bees and butterflies, tackling air pollution, and it also mitigates against the effects of urban heat island effect. Um, it also prolongs the lifespan of your roof covering. Our premium S-Pod tray is made from fully recycled materials. It's 55 kilos a meter squared. It is quick and easy to install, unlike the traditional three layers of the mat system. It can be easily removed and replaced. It also has a lower maintenance requirement and as little as two short visits a year and that's all that's required. The three layers of the product are the leaker, which is at the bottom, which is the drainage layer, that's expanded clay. Then there's a filter fleece, which stops the soil layer leaching away in rainfall. Then there is the substrate layer, which is the recycled brick and clay and tiles from the building industry. And then we have the vegetation on top, which is five to six different varieties of sedum. Well, that was really interesting. I think um, it's made it really uh, obvious, actually, how simple it is. You can see the trays. You can see they always look like like egg egg um, egg, egg boxes. boxes. That's yeah. it, egg boxes. And and like the substrate that you put in there. You're saying the the lig was it not lignum? What was it? What leaker leaker? Those yeah. sort of um, uh, balls of clay. Yeah, yeah. spandy yeah. clay. And then the, the um, cloth thing felt, yep. what, what is it, sort of membrane? Fleece. Fleece, yeah, there fleece you go. Membrane. Yeah. <laughs> fleece membrane, right. I'm getting there, you see. I kind of uh, note self and make notes <laughs> while I'm watching next time. Um, <laughs> um, and then the soil and then the plants. I mean, I think it's, um, oh no, and the brick stuff that you mentioned as well, the recycled yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, building yeah. materials. So yeah. it's really nicely explained, I thought. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's, a great, it's a great video. It's, we, we kept it simple because it really is simple. It, it's yeah. not... It's not complicated. People overthink it quite a lot, um, but it is it is very simple. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For you personally, I mean, obviously you've gone from like NHS and doing all that sort of tech stuff and all that kind of thing to doing this now. What for you, just personally, is really great about them? What do you love about these these roofs, these sedums? Um, so I live in the Chalk Valley, which is deepest, darkest Wiltshire. Um, yeah. I'm actually Wiltshire Dorset border. Um, it's very beautiful um, and although people might not believe it, um, we are s really affected by climate change here. Everybody is. Mm. And it's kind of, and my son is eight now and it's really made me realise that it's quite scary having a little person to look after. It's another human being and you think, it might not be in my lifetime, but in his lifetime, I'd, I'm actually a little bit scared to know what, life will be like then because yeah. um, nobody actually knows um, I mean the weather is we're going major extremes at the moment so who you know we just don't know what's going to happen um, so um, I love working with it because it's my little way of of helping that and climate change um, and it's a really beautiful thing to do and it does um, you know it does make a, a change in people's lives. Um, it's a very positive thing to do, really, which in in return makes my job very positive. Um, it's never a chore to go to work. I love I love going to work. So, yeah.
I'm really lucky. That's really nice. And the, and the, the flat when they flower, it looks so pretty. Yeah, yeah it's like, beautiful. Yeah, really. Yeah. Um, there's elegance there and beauty yeah. and um yeah. fascination and all sorts you know so as, yeah. as you imagine if you have got kids what a nice thing to be able to kind of study yeah. with them or to kind of like yeah. you know get them to look at and like see the life that's in there as well like you say all the little yeah. insects and birds and bees and yeah just so many things yeah. so we've done we've done quite a lot of projects at schools actually oh right. um, that's a good idea. Yeah. 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 So, yeah so we try and um we do try and donate when we can, um, to schools, small amounts. Um, we've done some really interesting work in Bristol um, for the council. Um, we did three diverse roofs. Um, so that was really exciting. So schools love it. Um, they never have a budget, but we do try and help them. Um, and hospitals as well, because uh, obviously for patients, hospitals can be really depressing yeah, places. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, bizarrely, I come from a obviously my NHS background and my healthcare nerdy study person I need figures and research yeah. and um really interestingly recently I found out that um people's pain threshold is reduced if they're in a healing environment if they're happier mm -hmm. um so shorter hospital stays all sorts so you know biophilia needs to be brought in hospitals basically but that's a whole different company <laughs> <laughs> actually i'm trying to bring about a policy change in the nhs to wow. do just that so we should chat <laughs> definitely yeah. um yeah, just, like, up. yeah definitely i've done an interview with leighton phillips who's working with nhs wales and they're implementing biophilic design and he's really trying to bring bring it in wow. there's like pockets of it that's happening in the nhs yeah. but it's and in different hospitals but it's like it's not joined up it needs to be yeah. like you say it needs to be across the board i mean i've i've just spent many many hours and days and things in in hospitals the last few years with my parents obviously my, my both of them have passed away now but it's been it's been traumatic space yeah. to be in and to witness and to think there's a different way of doing it and it's so frustrating um so, yes uh yeah i think all of us pulling our heads together i think we can really make a difference which is which is yeah. it's got to be great definitely Got to yeah. be a good thing. So, um, uh, so well, so you're exhibiting at Planted, so I'm going to see you there. So, anybody who's listening, make sure you get your tickets. Um, it's at Stourhead uh, in Wiltshire between nine, uh, between the ninth and the eleventh of June. Um, it's a gorgeous National Trust property as well, isn't it? I mean, it's a lovely space. It's. Oh, in a, I just... was there. I was there. Yes. Uh, yesterday was Sunday. I was. There, <laughs> I was there on Friday, and it. Oh, it was so beautiful in the sunshine. Yeah. Um. And it's just gorgeous. All the roses are flowering. Oh, nice. There's so much. There's so much flora and fauna at the moment. It's really beautiful. Oh, that sounds really nice. I have to bring my camera down and uh, and, and take Definitely. some pictures as well. So um for you though, what are you most looking forward to um at the at the show? Is there anything that for you that you're looking forward um, to on anything? <laughs> so actually I've just I don't know if you know well, I'm sure you know this, but they've actually released an app and oh, yeah. it, <laughs> yeah, it helps you build um, your plan, your event. Although I'm exhibiting, um, I'm sharing it with my colleague, Toby. Um, so we've got time to kind of sneak off and do different things. And he's doing a master's in um, sustainable building. Okay. Um, so he wants to see certain things. And I've just seen a couple of the talks on there. Uh, there's People, Planet and Profit, which looks really interesting. I think Oliver Heath is doing that. And then there's a farming one, which is quite topical for me because my dad's a farmer and I live on a commercial farm so that's quite good um the food um I'm a bit of a foodie and yeah. their food last year was brilliant and apparently it's gonna be brilliant again mm -hmm. um and then this year they're doing the kids program which um I'm gonna bring my son on Sunday and he's gonna do some workshops so that's really good but the main thing for me is seeing my friends um I have a very high percentage of friends there so exhibiting so oh, we'll nice. all be together so it's going to be really nice yeah so lots from the market um um area and verve festival so um I, anna is amazing she's running a program there and yeah so yeah. um it's great so it's, it's gonna just be lovely can't wait <laughs> <laughs> fantastic i'm looking forward to uh, seeing the fold bookshop um and karen's doing some stuff as well but uh yeah i'm just so no, much I, I, I absolutely love karen um and everybody at fold they are wonderful and i go in there 
I try and go weekly just to say hello take a photo of Gold Hill and say hi I've got so many of their books they're just lovely yeah they do the book reviews in the back of the journal oh, and, I, love um, that. Yeah. I love that yeah. and there's just like there's always something like and they and yeah. the way they review is just brilliant as well so um there's always always sparks an interest um yeah. so yeah so everybody listening uh hopefully we'll get to see you there on it's, it's friday saturday and sunday this week 9th 10th 11th of june 2023 and just in case you are listening to this after the event um as i said uh planted run lots of different events throughout the year different speaker programs and stuff so they have a free newsletter please do go along and sign up for it. There is a link um, with the spiel that goes with this podcast. So, so please make sure you do. So um, Liv, uh, I've, I've, before I get to the very, very final question, which is the question I ask everybody, which is my magical question. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add at this point? Don't be afraid to have a green roof. That's what we say. Lots of people are scared. Um, they phone me up and they say, oh, it looks really complicated. No, it's not complicated. It's simple. Please just, um, realize it's simple um no matter how big or small you can do your little bit that's what i say um and follow us on insta or facebook um and i do lots of hints and tips and updates and um i'm trying i try to be quite active and we do go to a few events as well i'm going to hampton court flower show this year um and we're doing a few other um, sustainable building events so um, we keep you updated on socials so what's your uh, your handles on twitter and socials so we are sedum green roof on insta um facebook and twitter great thanks so make sure you all follow them on all those social channels so we keep get our tips and uh, we know what <laughs> we're doing fantastic so Liv, thanks so much so um final question then um, if you could paint the world with a magic brush of biophilia, what would it look like? I think I'd want education and access about nature and biophilia for everyone. So education starting right at the bottom. Um, and then they'd have a choice whether they want to access biophilia or whether they don't. Um, and I think that if we start there, we have a, an attempt at success. So that would be my magic little thing to make government and anybody that's um, in charge of our, you know, next generations to to educate. So yeah, that would be my magic little, my little thing. Thank you for listening to the Journal of Biophilic Design podcast.